is Nick with Logos by Nick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create vector textures from photographs using Inkscape. And if you'd like to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out the Inkscape Masterclass, which is a collection of over 50 videos where I go over every single tool and feature in Inkscape and I explain what it is and demonstrate how it works. I'll put a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here in Inkscape. This video is going to be a little bit, a little different than other videos I've done about texturing where I took this photograph and I just applied it over an object uh, with the masking feature. I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to show you how to create an actual uh, vector texture using this photograph. So if you'd like to follow along with what I'm doing here, just go ahead and find yourself an image like this, like a, a piece of cement or a brick wall, piece of wood, whatever you want to use to create a texture out of. Uh, you can go to pixabay.com, which is where I got this one from. I'll put a link in the description. Go ahead and copy and paste it into Inkscape and we'll be good to get started. What we want to do is just make sure we have this object selected with our select tool and then we will go to path, trace bitmap. And up here, we're going to have these three different options. These are three different methods for generating uh, vector tracings on top of this photograph here. We have brightness cutoff, edge detection, and color quantization. I'm just going to start right up here with brightness cutoff. I'm going to click update, and it's going to show you a preview in the, uh, the window here. And what we're seeing here is everything that's white is going to be transparent or negative space, and everything that's black is going to be an actual vector object that's created on top of the image here. So as you can see here, uh, there's really not much going on. There's not much to actually generate here. So I'm going to try one of these other methods. I'll click update. And you're going to have to try these different methods based on uh, whatever image you're using. Every image is different and traces differently with this filter. So as you can see here, edge detection works a little bit better. Let me just look at uh, color quantization to see how that looks. Uh, and you can see we end up with something like that there. That's a little too heavy. I don't want to exactly work with, I don't want to use something like that. Uh, let me lower the colors down to two. Let me update that again. And as you can see, we get something like this here. And again, you can we can alter these numbers here. You can adjust them to see if you get better results. And you also have invert image over here. If you click on that and click on uh, update, you'll notice it inverts the uh, selection that is creating. So let me put this back up to edge detection because I quite like how that looks. Let me get rid of the invert. And that right there is what I want to create. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Let me close out of that. And as you can see, we have this texture that we've generated. And this is an actual vector object. You can change the colors of this. You can edit the nodes individually. You can even apply all of the path functions that you would normally do to a vector object uh, up there with this image here. Now, sometimes you'll try to create a, um, a texture out of an image. And for whatever reason, the uh, trace bitmap function, it just can't grab any information from the photo here. What you can do, a nice little trick that I like to do, I like to take the image and open it with GIMP. And what you can do is you can go to colors, saturation, and bring the saturation all the way down to get rid of the color data. Click OK. And what we want to do is make the darker areas darker and the lighter areas lighter. And what that's going to do is it's going to create more contrast in the image. It's going to, it's going to provide more details for that filter to grab onto and trace vector objects over. So let me come over here to colors. Let me click on curves. I want to take this black stop down here and bring this to the right just to darken the dark areas. Then I'll take this white stop up here, bring this to the left to lighten the light areas. Maybe I'll adjust this a little more. That right there looks pretty good. If I toggle the preview off and on, you can see the big difference there. See, if, if, if Inkscape's having trouble creating a tracing from this image, it's going to be a lot easier for it to do so from this image because there's more detail visible here. So I'll go ahead and click OK to finalize that. I'll go to Edit, Copy Visible. And let me come back into Inkscape and let me paste that in. Let me just right click and go to paste. And there we have this image. Now let me try the filter again. I'll go to path, uh, trace bitmap. And let me click on brightness cutoff. See how that looks. Click update. That looks pretty good. Let me try edge detection. That looks pretty good as well. I think I'll go with that actually. I'll go ahead and click OK. And you might have to give it a minute or two to process. Sometimes it takes a little while. Um, because it's generating a whole bunch of information here. Like there's a whole bunch of nodes. There's thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of nodes that are uh, comprising this image here. And that I'd say, that's a little too intense. I don't want to go with something like that. Let me try this again. Let me just try brightness cutoff. I'll click update. I'll go with that right there. That's, that's a good balance right there. I'll click OK. Let me close out of that. And there we have our vectorized texture. Now let me, let me apply this to an object just to show you how it works. Let me create a star over here. 
I'm just going to create a regular old star like that. Let me get rid of the outline. Um, let me convert that to a path. And I want to take this texture and I want to raise it to the top with this button that says Raise Selection to the Top. And I want to make this texture white so you can get an idea of how it looks and where you want to apply it to the image. Let me make it a little smaller. That looks pretty good right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag over both of these objects and go to Path Difference. And again, you may have to give this a minute or two to process. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, data that has to be processed there. And if you zoom in, you can see we have taken that star and we have applied a vector texture to it. And as, if you zoom in, you can see this is, not, this is not like when you take a photograph and mask it over an object and, and you zoom in and you can see the pixel. This is an actual vector texture. So uh, that should do it for this video. That's how you can go about creating vector textures using Inkscape. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.